Always wear safety goggles and appropriate safety gear when demounting or mounting tires. Remove the valve core with a Kentool T16P and completely deflate the tire. Run a wire down the valve stem to make sure it is not plugged. Follow OSHA regulations. Using a T26B slide impact bead breaker, place the bead breaking foot between the tire and rim flange and use the tool as demonstrated. Reposition the tool and repeat if necessary. To avoid extra work, break the bead on the back side of the rim first. Lubricate the bead and rim surfaces with Bead Ease Tire Lubricant after breaking the first bead. Turn the assembly over and repeat the bead breaking and lubricating process. Starting at the valve stem, insert two T45A2000 or T45A type tubeless tire irons with the stop facing toward the rim flange on either side of the valve stem, approximately six inches apart. Step through the wheel and step on the tire opposite the valve stem to direct the top bead into the wheel well. Push the tire irons down to lift the tire bead over the flange as shown. Remove one tire iron and insert the curved end between the bead and the rim where the bead is beginning to come over the rim. Be sure the knob is facing the tire. Proper tool location reduces the amount of effort to insert the tool. To help avoid bead damage, make sure the tip on the curved end of the tubeless tire iron is below the bead toe by pressing down on the tire iron as you pull toward the center of the wheel. Remove the second tire iron and continue this procedure, alternating irons, until the top bead is completely free of the rim. Lift the tire assembly into a vertical position and insert the straight end of the T45A tire iron between the tire bead and the back rim flange until the tip hooks over the back side of the rim flange. Holding the tire iron as shown, lower the tire assembly while pulling up on the tire iron. A rocking or bouncing action may be necessary to pry the rim out of the assembly in some cases. Inspect the rim, valve stem, and tire beads for any damage before lubricating with bead ease. After thoroughly inspecting the rim and valve stem, lubricate the rim surface, especially the wheel well. When lubricating the beads, do not let any excess lubricant puddle inside the tire. Position the tire opposite the valve stem with the narrow side of the rim facing up and install the bottom bead. Use a T45A type tire iron to pry the bead over the rim flange if necessary. Do not use a hammer to strike the tire or rim during the mounting process. Stand opposite the valve stem and pry the top bead over the rim flange with the curved end of the tubeless tire iron. As shown, taking small bites, repeat this procedure until the top bead is free from the rim flange. For more information regarding service and inspection procedures for single-piece rims, consult the manufacturer or supplier. Always wear safety goggles when doing any inflation of a tire assembly. Follow OSHA regulations. All steel radial tires returning to service must be inspected using the procedures established by RMA Tire Information Service Bulletin Volume 33, Number 2. After the tire and wheel have been thoroughly inspected and mounted, seat the beads. Make sure the tire is concentrically seated on the rim by checking the distance between the rim flange edge and the molded ribs on the sidewall of the tire. Do not exceed 5 psi inflation pressure outside the Ken Tool inflation cage to seat the beads. The maximum variation in the distance between the rim flange edge and the molded ribs on the sidewall is 2 30 seconds of an inch at any point on the tire. With the valve core still removed, place the tire and wheel assembly into a Ken Tool inflation cage. Today's tire inflation is being performed in a T101 portable inflation cage. Making sure the valve stem is not positioned behind a bar and is easily accessible, install a clip-on air chuck. After the tire is inflated, the valve core will have to be installed while the tire is still in the cage. By positioning the tire correctly, 
You will not put any part of your body between the sidewall of the tire and the bars of the inflation cage when handling the air chuck. All tire inflation cages must conform to OSHA Standard 29 CFR 1910.177. Tubeless tires cannot be inflated when any flat or solid surface is in the trajectory. Read the warning label on the cage before inflating the tire. If there is not a warning label, contact Kentool for free labels. With the valve core removed, begin inflating the tire. All tire inflation devices must include a clip-on air chuck and an inline valve with a pressure gauge or a presetable pressure regulator. A sufficient length of hose to allow the technician to stand outside the trajectory is also required by OSHA. While remaining outside the trajectory zone, inflate the tire to 20 PSI and then check the tire beads for proper seating. Do not put any part of your body between the sidewall of the tire and the bars of the inflation cage. Never inflate beyond 40 PSI to seat the tire beads. If the beads are not seated at 40 PSI, stop. Deflate and determine the problem. Using the RMA inspection procedures for all tires returning to service, look for distortions, undulations, ripples, and or bulges. Listen for any popping sound. If any of these conditions are present, the tire should be deflated immediately, made unusable, and scrapped. Again, remain outside the trajectory zone during the inflation process. If none of these conditions are present, with the valve core still removed, inflate the tire to 20 PSI over the recommended operating pressure. If any signs of a zipper rupture appear, immediately stop inflation and deflate the tire. Any steel radial tire suspected of having been underinflated and or overloaded must remain in the inflation cage at 20 PSI over operating pressure for 20 minutes. If any signs of a zipper rupture are present, the tire should be made unusable and scrapped. If none of the signs are present and the beads are properly seated, reduce the inflation pressure to the recommended operating pressure and install the valve core before removing the tire and wheel assembly from the inflation cage. Install a self-sealing metal valve cap and return the tire to service.